Hi, I'm Andy Campbell, and I'm the author of the book Queer by Design, Happy Pride Typographics. I begin my book with the kind of object that most people can make, that many people have made, a protest sign made with marker and poster board. This one was carried in the Christopher Street Liberation Day March in 1972 by a woman named Jean Manford. It displays a keen sense of graphic messaging. Here she is, carrying the sign alongside her son Morty Manford, who is deeply involved in the GAA, or Gay Activist Alliance. And a sidebar here, the Gay Activist Alliance was the group that proposed the Greek letter lambda as a key symbol in the nation's struggle for gay rights. The source of the inspiration was from a chemistry textbook. As the designer Tom Bohr writes in the spec sheet, for the sciences of chemistry and physics, the lambda symbolizes a complete exchange of energy, that moment or span of time witness to absolute activity. And the lambda, perhaps unsurprisingly, given Morty Manford's um, relationship to the group, appears here at the bottom of her protest sign, which marked the inception of a different group, one that's still around today, PFLAG, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. So from small gestures can come really great things. Absolute activity is a beautiful way to put what it's like to look back on decades of LGBTQ activism, graphics, and material and visual culture. We have been so prolific. We are funny, we are brash, we are open to change. More on that in a little bit. But there's more to it than tracking what queer people have made historically. There's also the question, what might it mean to queer design, its methods, its assumptions, and its foundations? There's an object for me that does all of these things, both represents something central to the visuality of LGBTQ activism and its subsumption into consumer capitalism, as well as its capacity to muck up the waters and ask fundamental questions about design and its histories. That object is the rainbow flag. And I have to be honest that when my publishers initially suggested putting the rainbow flag on the cover of my book, I blanched. I thought it was way too basic. I thought it was participating in the rainbow capitalism and the rainbow washing that I find otherwise so abhorrent. Yet the more I found out and researched about this ubiquitous symbol, the more I came to understand it as a near perfect encapsulation of the power and tricky politics of LGBTQ movements in the United States. From its inception, when it was designed, dyed, and sewn by the hands of Gilbert Baker, Lynn Seegerblom, and James McNamara, as well as many others, the flag was a product of people power. Its scale, the ambitiousness of the dye job, the humor of including one tiny errant queer star right over here, on silver lame on one side and then gold lame on the other, is a testament to queer creativity. I should also note that the two original flags um, were hung in different orientations, suggesting that the flag has no right or correct side. Within the next couple of years, the flag shifted from eight colors to six, due entirely to the unavailability of pink and turquoise as um, mass-produced flag fabrics. Since its beginning then, the rainbow flag has done this dance between creativity and capitalism, between the needs of production and the scale of movements. Over the years, several other flags have been proposed. A pride flag with a black stripe to honor those who passed from AIDS, for example. Or, more recently, the addition of a brown and black stripe, the product of a Philadelphia campaign called More Color, More Pride, led by Amber Hikes. The creation of the More Color, More Pride flag with the brown and black stripes was in direct response to a series of incidents of violence directed at queer, brown, and black people. Its inclusion speaks to some of the historical lacuna in mainstream gay rights organizations and their causes, while also acknowledging the work that's still yet to do. There's also the Progress Pride flag, which was created by the techno musician and designer Daniel Quasar, which takes the more color, more pride additional uh, colors of black and brown and adds the colors of the trans pride flag, a kind of light blue, light pink, and white, created in 2000 by Monica Helms, who is a Navy veteran. Given the subject of my research, I hear a lot of complaints about these new pride flags. The chief amongst them is about the rules governing good flag design. And I'm sure for many, perhaps everyone in this room, the use of the word good in relation to design sets off alarm bells. The rainbow flag gives us an opportunity to, an opportunity to say, fuck your rules. Our flag changes. We are changing all the time as a community, learning more, finding ever new ways of telling our multifaceted stories. The flag itself is a bit anarchic, and wonderfully so. 
Baker and the other designers of the flag did not copyright or trademark their design. Neither did any of the people making permutations of the rainbow flag since. This leaves it open to both our imaginations as well as to the machinations of corporate capitalism, of social media filterisms, and bad faith arguments about who is a true queer. There is so much more to explore and discover in the history of LGBTQ design, but for now, though, I'll have to say goodbye. So please get in touch if you feel like it. My contact info is on the slide below, and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Bye.